What is up guys, Rekus here with a new video and today with my first video on the new game mode Force War. Yeah, it actually took some time. <laughs> I got busy figuring everything out and uh, after quite some time now I feel like I can give you guys some honest opinion about well, most aspects of this game mode and what I like and what I don't like and there are certainly a few aspects that, uh, yeah, that are not great to say the least. Um, let's start off though with something I did like and um, it is actually pretty limited. I mean if we look just at this screen there are five elements to it, the Lear Expedition, Council Chamber, Watchtower, Earthwain and Force Rival and I like the Lear Expedition and that's about it. <laughs> Everything else uh, yeah, pretty much sucks in my opinion so that's not great. Um, let's start off with the Lair Expedition, because that is something I, yeah, for the most part appreciate it. Because those are basically five bosses. And the way those bosses work is you click on one, and then you can select uh, modifiers, and every modifier basically makes this boss stronger. So um, you have this first trait, and this first trait basically increases attack and HP up to the modifier strength of 12, the modifier intensity 12, and then you can strength divine damage, speed, and some other traits that give them more damage. Uh, you can block certain hero factions, there are special modifiers to every boss, and I kind of like the idea of having this challenge and um, trying to figure out how to work uh, a boss and how to build a team basically that can kill a boss. And um, that was something I, I deeply appreciated and was a lot of fun. Uh, one thing I didn't like, um, this boss, or uh, all of those five bosses, to the highest extent are showing what I said before, that defense layers no longer really work in that game. We have Armra now in this game mode, which is a defense layer that works. But um, for most heroes, you can put Prawn on him, them, and uh, if you took all the damage nodes, they will die instantly or will be hit into unbending will instantly. So for most boss battles I was actually managing unbending will layers. Um, thinking about like okay what do I have to do for my heroes to have a chance to get a second active off to get this kill and um, what do I need to do to not lose too many layers of unbending will or uh, so that some opponent might not get the kill shot on my SFX or something. And um, of course that includes RNG and it can it can still be nice. It can still be nice, let's be real. And those limited boss fights to think about that, to think about the positioning and uh, this nice little riddle um, that we can take. And maybe you can include that one modifier that you thought was impossible. Like um, for the priest one, I would have not thought that I could... No, that is not the right one. That is not the right one. Which one is it? Ah, this one. Reduce the energy of the ally with the highest attack by 100 at the beginning of each round. I would have not thought that I could include that, um, because that is a very punishing modifier, basically um, zeroing your energy every round. It does, by the way, not reduce the energy by 100. It uh, sets the energy to zero. So even if you feed the energy over 100, it will still be reduced to zero. So uh, kind of the wrong description there. But figuring something out and then figuring the team on that can work with that modifier, that is really nice. And then getting this successful clear at 700 is great. Um, and basically for every bit, every higher danger level you kill, you get more points and that is transferred to ranking and the best one at the end gets a, a nice loot for that. So that is that is something I really like. That is great. And if you make it over certain thresholds, there is some bonus loot to it. And that is great as well. And most of those bosses are decently designed. I like the priest boss. Priest boss is uh, quite good. Has some nice mechanics to it. Um, not too punishing. It's one of the least punishing here. Assassin lead boss. Yeah, it was a little bit too much damage over time effect. And dem um, dealing with damage over time effects is a little bit hard. I don't like the Cthuga in here, for example. Um, damage over time effect while when you hit him. And at that level where they have attack um, and hold damage and everything, that one wasn't nice. That one wasn't nice. I would be much more happy if they uh, scrapped that, um, took that out and replaced it with some other hero. Um, I mean, even Valkyr would be better than that. Um, but yeah, like that that one wasn't too great. Uh, here it is mainly the SFX, but um, I mean, you can win against the SFX. The dodges are a little bit of a problem. 
it's kind of a punishing hero, but I think it's it's still decent. Uh, this one I hate. This one I really hate. Um, I know you can. I could easily clear a higher stage on that. No questions asked. I want to. I'm going for really high clear now. So that is that is another thing. Um, I'm not going for like 500 or something. I'm going for 660, 700, something in that neighborhood. Um, I hate that Sherlock. Um, and I kind of hate that Holmes Young. That Holmes Young is difficult to control. You have to kill him basically very early on to have a chance to win this. Uh, otherwise, this, this extra attacks will just murder you. They hit for like 3 trillion damage or some uh, BS. That is not something um, you want to have on the board. I really hate this Sherlock. And I really hate this Aspen. And both for the same reason. The reason is, um, all of those enemies are faster than you. And all of those enemies, um, and this Aspen and the, the Holmes Young I just showed, uh, the, the Sherlock I just showed, inflict CC on turn one. And that is so annoying, because you lose so many attempts just to CC RNG. Like, there wasn't there any other hero that they could put in there. Is, does it have to be that way? We have limited attempts. Uh, attempts cost gems, and I think it's like 50 gems per attempt. It's not even cheap. It costs a lot of uh, gems actually to progress this and to get um, to to make progress here. Uh, so uh, those two I don't like. But overall, Lair Expedition is the good part. Now I have one problem with that game mode, and those are actually those project blueprints. I hate those. I hate those in the early days. Just take them out. Take them out of those bosses. The problem you have with those bosses is, um, especially on the first two or three days, um, when you first clear those uh, bosses and you get to like 500 or 600, um, you get a lot of those levels. You get like 10, 30, 50 and so on. You get a ton of those project blueprints and you actually use those project blueprints to upgrade the Earthwain. And what the Earthwain is, is basically something you, like your Celestial Island Mine. You can collect construction ingot and you can collect construction stone. And uh, every time you do this, you get, just get your loot and you can upgrade this Earthwain with those project blueprints. What does that mean? Basically, as soon as you upgrade the Earthwain, your income of those resources gets higher. And those resources can directly be donated to the council chamber and they are translated into points. And that is quite substantial. So there is a direct incentive to do those fights directly after reset. Because if you do them directly after reset and you, you do them quickly, you get your uh, project blueprints, you can upgrade your earth vein earlier and the longer you have a highly upgraded earth vein, um, the more resources you actually get. And I hate mechanics that are punishing you for just living in a time zone that doesn't have a convenient um, reset time. The reset time in Germany is like 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. depending on like if it's winter or summer time. Uh, that is not great. I don't want to be awake at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. And they have often done something like that in the recent game modes. They have done something like that in the... Um, What's the game mode called? I forget the name, Starland Arena. In the Starland Arena, where you have to log in at 2 a.m. or at the reset time, otherwise we will instantly start losing attacks because you start with, with, with stamina. And this here is even worse because it requires multiple days of that. And um, I hate that. Find another way to upgrade the Earthwain. Don't connect it to Lair Expedition. Um, I mean, let those bosses reward you with points. That is all right for the individual ranking. That is totally okay. 37, that is annoying. Let's not do that. Okay, that's better. Eight. Eight is all right. Okay. Um, and that is, uh, disconnect this. I don't I don't want this to be connected. Uh, you can you can put them into Force Rival. They are already dropping in Force Rival. If you have, uh, um, if you have um, high clears on those bosses, um, at the time Force Rival starts, those project blueprints that you drop in Force Rival will be absolutely useless. And you have those quests here, those quests, and you get those quests every day, um, scouting in the Watchtower, complete battle in Monster Lairs, and you get project blueprints there. And those are mainly for people that don't clear those high-end bosses. And that is alright. I mean, there has to be another source of it, I get that. Um, but that is like 
very uninteresting. I think those low gem rewards are a little bit insulting as well, like 10 gems when you want to have like 50 gems for an attack for a boss. Could be a little bit more, I think. At least give us back, like, at least make it 100. You get enough gems through it uh, either way. There's like, you can buy 10 attacks or 20 attacks even. Uh, this is 1000 gems and then you go here and you can buy um, you can buy those attacks as well. And this is another 50 uh, uh, gems per attack and 10. I didn't attack by the way because apparently we are... Yeah, we are losing <laughs> quite hard, <laughs> which will be another topic in a second. So, um, and that is that about Earthway. Nothing more to say. You really get your resources. And I mean, like beyond that, it is all right. Get your resources collected every now and then and it will be good. Um, the Watchtower is another thing. I don't like the Watchtower. Uh, the Watchtower is stupid in a way because you can get good RNG and can get points out of it. And I don't like that. Like... Um, if that is a competitive game mode and it's really about how many or how, how strong of a boss you can kill if config if you, the person is uh, shall win that can get the highest clear on all of those bosses combined um then don't put a mechanic in there just just randomly drops your um loot and they drop resources and they don't even drop low amounts of resources they drop like like a um, substantial amount of resources that you can convert to points and those uh, at the end uh, go towards your individual ranking so i mean like can i just luck out and be jesus now that's stupid that's stupid that shouldn't be in the game and it's it really helps nobody to have this watchtower in the game it is not even a cool mechanic you have to click on it and then it has a minute cooldown like you have to click, you can do it three times, but there is a minute cooldown in between. Who likes that one minute cooldown? Nobody wants that. Let's, let me click it three times and be done with it if you want to keep it in the game. And take those resource rewards out there. I mean, they, they put the res uh, this resource in there, the, the blue crystalline ore, and you need that to buy some uh, buffs for some attacks in the force rival, which is alright. Let that drop from there, even though I kind of feel strange, but uh, alright, whatever. Um, but not the construction stone brick and the um, construction ingot. Let those be restricted to lair expedition or to some other competitive way. I would love to see um, those stones being dropped in force rival as well if you do good attacks. Currently there is not really any reward to it, um, to doing a good attack. If you do like 11 points or something, if you do like um, 13 or 20 points, uh, there is no reward to that. Um, and I would love to see that. Uh, by the way, let's just do one attack here. I won't optimize my team for this. Um, I just want to show a quick attack so that we can look at the points. So unoptimized attack, 11 points, sucks. Doesn't matter. I just want to show this screen. So um, basically, that is the next thing I hate. Um, you deal damage to a, to a boss that we will have a look at in a second. And then you get this durability deduction. And that is basically... Um, the damage that you deal to the tower. Um, and this durability is calculated on a damage range. And there are um, seven stages to this damage range. We will just land it in this one, uh, basically right in the middle. Um, and those ranges, I hate them as well. First of all, we already hit 20 on a lot of attempts in this season. This is the first season and we are already in 20. This is the cap damage. Even if we deal trillions and trillions of damage in the future, because we got more upgrades on everything, it doesn't matter. It will always be 20. Um, and while 20 surely isn't possible on every single attempt, with an optimized team we hit 14 to 17 even on the hardest of bosses. So um, it is kind of stupid to have this. And what they obviously do with that is they um, they reduce the impact strong players like Jesus have on the battle. Because like um, 6 billion to 60 billion is like 8. And if Jesus can uh, reach just that um, and he gets 14, then two normal players can already uh, are already stronger than Jesus. Just an example. And even G uh, Jesus at his biggest damage will mm, at the maximum reach 20 points. He can get stronger and stronger, it doesn't matter. He will do 20 points. And that's also why we don't see a huge impact of guilds like Omega Project on this battle. Um, and while I see the appeal for 
uh, lower spenders for players that are maybe at the earlier stage in the game um, to have a competitive chance as well, which is not available in some other game modes like Ace or Guild War or something like that. Um, I kind of feel like it's still a bit stupid to have those strong players and just say, yeah, you you can attack, but really you will only do X amount of damage. And uh, it is even capped. The damage you can do is even capped. So even if, if I would build like the perfect team, I could never one-shot a fort. I would do 20 points. And that is, of course, arguable. I mean, like, um, should there be more stages? I feel like at least they should put more durability stages in there. To uh, Even if it's just... Um, for the future, uh, if we get in the f uh, more upgrades in the future, which we'll certainly do if there is power creep in the future, we should be able to reach uh, higher durabilities as well and to not make it feel like, okay, we will cap it anyway. Because that will be the future, everybody just capping it. And at that point, it doesn't matter if it's just if it's me attacking or like a player with a tenth of my power. If everybody can hit 20, then the impact of everybody is the same. And I don't really like that. Um, beyond that, I was just talking about it. I would love if the if those durability stages granted you construction ingot and construction brick. That would be huge um, for the individual ranking because that would make this a good competition in Force War, a good attempt in Force War, a good attacks in Force War have a direct impact on the individual ranking and would be a huge incentive for players to actually perform well here. Um, because giving you Construction Brick and Ingot, um, then you can go back to the Council Chamber and don't... Oh, we, uh, we have to get some resources. Give me a second. Some resources. And we could donate that here and you would get some points. Okay, let's donate it. And um, then your, your ranking would improve. And those rankings are really important because with those rankings, you get those rewards. And everybody wants to have those rewards because those are nice rewards. There's some nice stuff in here. Um, like 100,000 um, CI chests, that's a million CI, right there. Or those chests with the, with the, um, with the stellar shards. Really nice. Ten of those three of orange chests, uh, those are, by the way, a single core shard. Not too impressive, but I will, but we take it. We take it. It's 30,000 spiritual essence or like ten core shards. We, ten, we take ten core fragments. No questions asked. Yeah, and we take we get another frame now. Damage reduction, whatever. I mean, like it's a cool frame, and it's a really nice looking frame. I never actually looked at it, but it looked like it's a little castle, and there is a helmet. If they put some proper stats on it, that would have actually been a really nice frame. As well, of course, it's overshadowed by the Black Friday frame that we will get tomorrow. So, like, yeah, no reason for me to play it, even though it's a really nice one. I like it. Um. And still, um, they didn't really do the best with those rewards. Because the biggest problem the rewards have, uh, we have the force rewards here. And um, like the winner gets 600 contract starting. That's huge. That's huge. Top reward. Very nice reward, actually. That's like, uh, if we took the normal starry value, 600 starry is like 25 euro. That's insane. Pretty good. Um, interesting for free-to-play players or some normal players even get some packs or just do some summons or something like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. The biggest problem is this one. And I have no idea why it exists. It just shouldn't exist. It just shouldn't exist. Put this badge here. Just put it here. Don't put it here. It, does, it should not be here. Because apparently you get this badge for losing. <laughs> if you lose first, you apparently get this badge and um, avatars have now have um, a value because actually we have the CI galleries. So every single avatar that you earn will give you a slight stat buff. And that stat buff for whales is actually worth more than the 600 contract story and the 3000 gems. And if you tend to lose, then there might be an incentive to actually say, let's go for the badge, which is arguably right. If only the first one to lose get it, gets it, then the lower bracket, the lower three um, forces, actually, in my opinion, have a race to lose. <laughs> which is so stupid. Which is so, so stupid. Obviously, it ends the game mode a little bit earlier, which is nice. But it's so stupid to give players an incentive to lose. It should be a battle to be the best not to lose. And I'm not angry towards 
I, th I think there was uh, there were some commanders that said like, okay, basically my force will lose. We can see that it's it's clear as day. There are forces with like ten. Um, I mean, you can see it right now. Let's take a look at it. There are forces with ten um, with ten towers and strongholds and everything now, while we sit at four. And we don't even try to lose. Actually, <laughs> we just uh, were at the position at the start that uh, yeah, that wasn't that great and. Uh, escalated and now we are losing rather fast um, so my force will likely get the avatar though it is not intentional i have to say that uh, there were some forces though that um, apparently tried to do it intentional and i don't blame them i don't blame them i mean like is it really that important to get 60 starry gems more or another 60 is it that important you can get an avatar and that avatar will give you a stat buff for every single fight to come so I mean, I don't blame people that, uh, that understand that their force is losing and uh, don't no longer go for that. But it's really the age's fault at that point. If they put that, those, uh, this avatar up here, we would not have this problem, we would not have this discussion. And I feel like people, people were hating too much on those commanders that said like, okay, we go for the avatar. Because that is sadly, uh, as stupid as it is, hate the age for it, don't hate your commanders. It is an incentive. It is something nice that you should go for, or you can go for, if you can't get the win, or or one of the top places, that is. If you're one of the lower places anyway, like 8, 7, 6, pff, why not? Why not sacrifice 120 Star Gems and get that avatar? If it works, it works, it's nice. So that is something you can argue in the comments about, it's just my take on it. Um, the last thing I actually want to talk about now is Force Rival itself. Um, there have been some discussions about the map itself and the map placing. There was apparently one force down here. I don't even see it anymore. It was at the beginning anyway. Uh, and all forces had three neighboring uh, forces. And this one in the, in the bottom right corner, it only had two. And this is a huge difference because if you have three neighboring forces, three neighboring forces can attack you. So you can uh, die way earlier than if you have just two neighboring forces. So that is like kind of stupid. Um, I really, really don't like that, to be honest. Every now and then you get resources here. I, I don't think it's for the battles itself. No, I think it's from the from the strongholds. Yeah, there's some roots to it, and uh, basically we just attack a tower and the durability reduced. Like, we can do it again. One second. It's like 91.93 now. One second. 91.93 now. Now we do a battle. It's 14. And now it's 91.92 because it was actually reduced by 0 0.014. That is what this durability means. If it's 11, it's 0 0.011. So the maximum damage that you can do is 0 0.02. Um, yeah. Which means you as a single person with max damage can do a max damage per day of 0 0.4. So you have like no impact at all on the battle, but a lot of you will have. Uh, and that is another point. A lot of people have a lot of impact in this game mode. Still, there is no actual way to communicate with your force. Our force commander is Jesus. I'm actually wise commander. I'm here as well. But there is no chat. We need a button for chat. Like Jesus has to be able to write some stuff. There has to be a chat with like, with like, with like orders from the commander. That is important so that Jesus can write like, yeah, please attack B19. Those are, those are the names for the towers. There has to be a way to do that. And if there is no way to do that, this whole um, game mode has no sense because I can't make a discord and say like, yeah, all people of rune successor join because I won't reach them. It has to be in game. And it has to be separated for the re maybe a regular chat. It's not that needed, but it would be nice. And a chat with the stuff from the commanders and vice commanders so they can say, yeah, like, we are going to attack here. We, that is our strategy so that everybody can read that, that without it being uh, blown away by a thousand messages from some people asking stuff. So that is another way. Also, the way those commanders are, like, decided or who's commander, it's, like, always the strongest player in the single member ranking at one point. So, like... I mean, is, is that smart? I don't know. I mean, it's one way. So it will always be a whale, by the way. And uh, 
if they keep that system that way, where the where the avatar is still one of the most interesting uh, rewards here for whales, then you will see uh, this become a losing battle in the future. So I don't know if you like that. Um, Force War. The 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 fights actually. Uh, work on this skill tree. This is the Divine Statue technology. Um, and basically you have classes, you decide on a class for your boss, which is Warrior and in in that thing. And then you have like a thousand buffs here. And some of those are a minor stat buffs like this, crit and crit damage, whatever. And then there are some huge buffs, um, all allies armor and block when somebody blocks. And you can even block the enemy from using Warriors. And uh, with the with this game mode progressing, you actually get more and more upgrades, and this leads to you having a huge boss, and this basically looks like this. And this boss, in my opinion, is... Yeah, what shall I say? It's a very annoying design. It is like... I don't know how to play against this. I mean, you can do some stuff. If you have like the mage uh, boss enemy that CCs a lot, you can use some Ignis, you can get some buffs or something like that. It's all right. But this thing does a thousand things. It does like 30,000 attribute reductions. It does CC, it does marks, it does whatever else. And there is there are minions and they drain energy. And look at those attribute bonus. And then they have passive and burn. And if I think it's just an overloaded boss. And that is not nice because preparing against it is actually hell because it does 30,000 things and uh, the boss fight itself just doesn't feel fun. If you fight a full tech boss, it's just not fun. You struggle to do any real damage. Um, you struggle to cope with all the mechanics that it has. And then you basically work yourself around to a team that works kind of. And most of those mechanics, uh, you just have to ignore them because there is really not much you can do against them. And the next thing is you prepared your team for the bosses in the layer expedition, come back here and then notice, okay, the enemy has like the mage boss. Okay, now I need some Ignis and then I need that. And I need a Ruiz Scepter here or like a, a Endless Cane and uh, come back and the enemy changed the boss or there is another target and the boss is different and now you need to prepare for warrior again and then change something around and then you notice uh, when you click on it oh they have assassin confinement and i can't use the sfx that is my main homeowner so i'm basically screwed anyway and um that just feels so over complicated it just feels so over complicated and it makes this game mode to struggle and i feel like and those shall be the ending words of this video, I feel like a lot of people gave up on it. I feel like a lot of people, especially in our force, gave up on it, didn't feel motivated anymore. And this might be better for the winning forces, I don't know, might be the case, but I don't feel like people are having a lot of fun with this game mode right now, and I feel this game mode is in desperate need for a lot of change, and DH uh, should rework this, should look into all of this stuff that we just noticed, make this game mode fun and um, let people have a little bit more impact on the fight. Um, with they can deal huge damage, let them deal huge damage. That is something I want to take away. And uh, beyond that, we have all the stuff I just said. Communication, uh, that is really one of the main points. We need the chat. Without the chat, this is, this is a nonsense game mode. And... Um, yeah, with that, guys, tell me your opinion on, on this in the comments. I kind of went into a rant about it. Uh, I hope you liked the video, and we will see us in the next one.